what you learned in school. Never mind what your parents told you and disregard what your friends say. From now on, the only people now on, you need to listen to, 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 to are these guys. Are these guys. For the next several minutes, they'll take you on a journey through the political jungle. And when your journey is over and you're safe at home, they promise you'll be stronger, smarter, and just plain better. So buckle up, hang on to your ears, because your journey starts now. 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 Hi, this is the Ad Odd Show. It's Thursday, June 21st, 2018. We're in the Freedom Towers uh, on the 15th floor in Liberty City. Do you know where we're at, Nate? Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga. Uh, what continent you know, is that most on? Most people think that it's uh, not a real place. Oh, it's a real place. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've never been in a fake place before. No, never. My, my microphone... It's just fine. It's not at the. I, I'm not. I'll wait until a break. I, I blame Nicho. <laughs> He'll appreciate that. It's a good thing he doesn't listen to the show. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of stuff to talk about, but I think first what we'll do is it's the day after the Second Amendment march in Lansing, Michigan, at the state capitol. Oh, was that yesterday? I want to personally thank. I wasn't involved as as I normally am. I kind of took a year off, but I wanna I want to thank Nate, uh, who did a lot. Uh, Terry. Mm-hmm. Skip, Michigan gun owners and Michigan Open Carry that all yeah. came together to have our largest event as far as turnout and vendors that we've ever had in nine years. I think. Yeah, and you know, you know what else has been great? A lot of people, way more than usual, mm-hmm. have volunteered to help, like the day of, carry yeah, things, set up nice? tents, move yeah. stuff. We had a lot of people donate money. Uh, you know, before the march, mm-hmm. that was good. That yeah, was, I that mean, it was our helped. best year for that too. And yeah. It's just, I think there's just a, I think people are getting fed up. There aren't any huge pushes right now today, right, right. Uh, for gun control. There have been in the past. There's few months, murmurs here and there, but, but I think I think people are just fed up with dealing with it constantly, right? And it's yeah, it was awesome. So it did was you, really cool. Do you think the the band was a helpful draw? Do you think I people think it enjoyed was. that? Yeah. I think people enjoyed it. I, you know, they play their own type of music. Yeah. It's rock. It's grunge. It's not for everybody. But some I think, patriotic lyric, lyrics. You know, there's I some think, songs like I, that. Rolling Stone called them America's most patriotic rock band. Yeah, you, you can't. And we all know how much we love the Rolling Stone around right, here. Right. So, yeah, I, I think it. I think it was good. People stuck around and watched the band. People seemed to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, you said the guys were really, really cool. They were. They were really cool. Laid back, easy to work with. Yeah, they were. Uh, there's a video out there of a cute little girl singing a song that the van, a uh, van, the band, uh, videotaped and put on their website. Yeah, and said something like, "If this cute little girl asks you to listen to her sing, you listen to her sing." Yep. Yep. And I, I think cutie. their uh, their lead singer is being replaced by, by this, her by this little girl. Yeah, and. What's not so ironic, maybe fitting, fitting more than ironic, is yeah. that her name's Liberty, ah, and they are perfect. A patriotic America's band. most patriotic rock band. So I can't, I can't imagine it getting any more fitting than that. And I will say, she is a cutie. She's very cute. Yeah, she is, and she knows it, and she uses it all the time. So she'll be very successful touring with the band. Yep. She has to work on her autograph. It's, not, it's, not so it's a little scribbly, yeah. but that's all Give right. her a crayon, she'll yes. do something. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else went on there? We had some gubernatorial uh, candidates speaking. Most of permission. them. Yeah. I think all the Republicans and a Libertarian. Uh, uh, I take that back. I don't know if I don't know if Jim Hines spoke. Oh. Huh. I don't know if he was asked. He was. He was. Dr. Hines, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, he he was invited. So yeah. Uh, what else? That was uh, good. We had a, f- a few few politicians, uh, you know, other than gubernatorial mm-hmm. gu- gubernatorial governor, governor candidates, uh, and then of course representatives from each of the groups that organized it: MGO, sure, MOC, sure. and yeah. SAM. So it was good. We had some other just patriotic people talk um, as well. We had Mike the Cop, who is a a YouTube uh, personality, I guess. His name's Mike, and he's a he's cop. a cop. Yeah, yep. 
think he's from the Metro Detroit area. I don't know what department, but he does a lot of funny, humorous, political stuff. Second Amendment supporter. We, uh, we, they had a lot of vendors there. A lot this year. Yeah, and, we did have a lot. And I heard that, that there was a lady, there was a hot dog vendor there, and she had yes. a Second Amendment March hot dog. She named them all. She had the Sam hot dog, she, mm-hmm. or the Sam... What, Sam sausage, sausage. sausage. <laughs> Sam sausage. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. She had like the freedom Frankfurter, freedom fry, freedom fries, maybe something like that. But it was all. Yeah, it was, it was. It was pretty cool. And they were. Holy cow! I had I I had one of her uh, beef, beef beef sausages. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was amazing. I'm not sure if, if that was the Sam sausage or not. Oh, Skip said the same thing. Good. He said it was delicious, and he said there was at least 20 people in line all through the event. It's constant. Yeah. So I don't. I. I feel she a little bad because I don't know where she's from. Uh, her business is called Out of the Box. Yeah, I'm not sure where she is uh, either. I mean, it's sure Michigan, I think, from, but, but I don't know where. Happen to see her. Well, she this. wants to come back next year. She yep. had a ball. She did good business, and she donated a. She did a nice chunk of money thank to the march too. Yeah, so thank, thank her for that for sure. Uh, so what else? Uh, Weather wise, it wasn't horrible. There was a little sprinkle. It was unfortunately there was a little sprinkle but when the band bad. was playing. Yeah, perfect. Was, but they yeah. were men. They they played through it. Oh, they played right right through it. So and I just the one guy at the one shock, the drummer. He touched one of the which cords is, of water. It's ironic that the drummer would be the one to get shocked because well, he I, has usually the least amount of electronics. electronics well, I think it, there was some arcing. <laughs> and some Tesla coils involved. I Between the bass player and the th- and the guitar so. player, there was. I like the bass player. How he was, he was kind of spread eagle and swatting down there, and he was. Oh yeah, no, they're they're a good band. Uh, so that that was good. Um, that was a departure. That was. Uh, uh, it wasn't cheap to get them there, but we thought it, it uh, helped bring people in, and I think it did. I think, I think so. I think, so. I think so. fans come as well so. as people that had heard of them that wanted to to hear them. Yep. So um, we'll see what happens in future years. Yeah, pretty cool. And they, they stuck around the whole time, and they were uh, they, they, they had a little merch tent, and they were signing things for people. Right. And, did they mingle a little out bit with people. in the crowd at all or not? A little, did, yeah, a little, yeah. a little, but they were pretty busy in their tent. I bet uh, after after they performed, so that was cool. I would, I would hope, and I didn't, I didn't see that because I wasn't there. But I would hope that they would have gone into the state capitol building and and you know looked around a little bit, maybe take some pictures. I think they with did. The rotunda. Yeah, I, I think stuff. they did. It's a beautiful, as most state capitals are, is beautiful. But it's, I mean, it's no New Jersey state capitol building. Well, probably not. No. So no. I think that's where they're from. I'm not really sure. But some no. of them are from New Jersey. Others are from their mothers. Oh, but some of them aren't? No, I don't so think all aliens? of them are. Yeah, might be. Uh, all right, so anything else you uh, want to well, add? Well, I mean, I think we I think we need to talk about the turnout. We said it was big. We but said it was our largest event, but... I, I think, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen a lot. In my head, I was thinking 1,000. Yeah, and I think it's somewhere around 1,000 people. That's what other people are saying as well. Yeah. It's always super hard to tell because people come and go. They never right. stand in one spot. You can get pictures, but it's hard to count from pictures. That's, we should we should put that in the notes for next year. We'll have a we'll have a count off. Well, we can we'll have the, all the people. Oh. Just, one, two, three, four. Actually, five, that would six. be it. Would be it would really be hard. Yeah, but that would be kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I was thinking we would take people like on their ears, like, <laughs> it, it, like or a scanner. Oh, I was just thinking like cattle, like. Oh. Oh, one tag them two, that way. If you accidentally three. count them again, you know. Yeah, we oh, can keep some. <laughs> a couple of them might have babies while they're in there, you know, and have a calf. So and, you got to. And we'll we'll know if we can uh, we can, if we, can uh, we can map their migration pattern we'll around have, the march we'll and see tag, how people move. Tags for the babies. We can, yeah, it was it was a little uh, so. They've been doing a lot of construction at the Capitol. Oh, They've also been mess. trying to fix their lawn right. and regrow the grass. And that was bad for us because... It was. They had basically the two big lawn areas were fenced off yeah. because they were trying to grow the grass there. So, And they have a big sidewalk that leads up to the steps where the speakers were. And so any photographs sort of over the crowd just showed the people that were in the sidewalk area. And y- y- you missed almost one and a half times that. We're off on the other part of the sidewalks right. to the left and to the yep. right. Yep. Uh, if it, if the lawn would have been open, and like in previous years, you would have had this great photograph with you know a thousand people out there with signs and flags. And of course, you get the news reports that say things like dozens of people show yeah. up or hundreds of people Which show up. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's but true. Somewhat biased. And then the um, 
I'm not going to name them because they may have fixed it, but the the one news organization the day before the march reported the wrong date. Right. It was, or, they said it was that day. Right. Which yeah. was Monday. And it was not true. Yeah. So that's not helpful. No. What about, the, uh, it was the summertime this, well, yeah, no, it was the summertime. In previous years, uh, we've had it during the school year. Do you think there were more kids there or high school kids or little kids or about the same? I don't know. if I think it was about the same percentage-wise. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard to tell. I mean, my family was able to come. It was yeah. the, the first year that my, my whole family came. Yeah. Uh, because of school just, and they just won't give you a few minutes alone. I, know. Really. <laughs> I, I spend <laughs> I spend all this time organizing this event just so I can have Get some away. alone time. <laughs> no, here they come. <laughs> no, I was gl- I was glad they came. It was good. Comes back like you know herpes or something. <laughs> Anyways, that's not a nice comparison. No, it isn't family. a nice comparison at all. Herpes. I mean, I'm herpes going, should be insulted. I'm going to tell them you said that. Oh, they listen to the show. Yep, I know. All right. So, do you want to move on, or yep. do you want to add anything else? That was good. I thank you, everybody that helped. Yeah. Uh, not only, I mean, especially the it people in well. the three organizations, but everybody else that volunteered there and were, gave input, like you, Brian. You gave input. There were only three people that got shot this year, so that's a record. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Not true. Oh, that is something. <laughs> I, there, there was. I expected this year to not only be the biggest attendance for us, but I thought we would have a, a larger than average uh, counter protest. Yeah. We didn't. I yeah. didn't see any. I, didn't, I heard I didn't there was the video, one guy. I didn't see any. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I saw, I saw a picture. Somebody took a a really misleading picture from like the steps way out by the ro- or the sidewalk the way out by the road with just people like wandering and saying, "Oh, nobody showed up." Right. It looked like there was. Uh, but I there were. I did not. I didn't see any yeah. counter protesters. I heard there was one. So I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, if you ever want to show up and have a conversation with a gun owner and actually try to, you know, have a meaningful conversation, oh. that would be the place to do it. You would think. All right. So nobody was shot? N- uh, other than the three people. Oh, okay. I don't think there was any. No, nobody was shot. No, I didn't hear of any. Shots fired. There seemed to be a slightly larger than usual presence of state police, but they oh, were cool. Was... They were just riding around on their bikes, having a good old time. Well, two things: uh, the Capitol Police in years past have actually told us that they love us because we're one of the best behaved, mm-hmm. most laid back groups that they get at the Capitol. So they, they they don't worry about us too much. And number two, there was. Capitol staff that said this that was the largest crowd that they'd had so far that year at any of they said that this year of any yeah, event this year this year it was the largest crowd so which is cool nice. yeah. it's good it's good I'm proud all right let's move on now okay one more thing about the Martin okay so <laughs> anyways there was this guy oh no <laughs> let's move on all right stay tuned for the date next year Right. I, I assume we'll be doing it again, or Maybe. somebody will be. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe some group. Yeah, there was always comments like that. You know, should be on a Saturday, and if they, if they don't want to do it, or there's some other group should take over the march. I responded that these are our reasons, and any group is free to have any events, and they have. We have always and, encouraged uh, other groups to do their own thing. Yeah, and I, I, I said exactly that. I think if somebody could organize an event every single day of the year, that would be a positive thing. Yeah. But it's not happening. No. And other ones are, are not nearly as well organized and as large as ours because we know what we're doing. we got experience. And we're building a, a larger fan base, and more people are aware of it, so that helps too. Mm-hmm. But there have been other Second Amendment events at the, at the Capitol outside of, you know, ours, and uh, we would welcome any Second oh, Amendment Oh, for sure. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. All right. You want to talk about immigration? Uh, yeah, I guess we should. Everybody else is. All right. I, uh, we, we can introduce it with is the this... First Lady, but I also have some uh, graphs that are interesting with data. Mm. I love data. You love data. Mm. You're a data guy. Mm-mm. Anyways, First uh, Lady... I'm a data guy. I'm a data guy. It's data. You're wrong. It's from the Latin, da-da. Okay. 
So we anglicize it to. How, how did I say it? Not <laughs> <laughs> it's data. Okay. Sure. All right. First, uh, first lady uh, Melania Trump visits child detention center in McAllen, Texas, today. Yes, she did. Uh, and she wanted to look into the controversy over the you know families being separated, like it's something new. It's happened in the past, and and uh, there seemed to be enforcing it more. Uh, I think to make a political point, which is fine. Hmm. Um, but <clears throat> what all the buzz wasn't that she was going to visit these kids and bring uh, reporters and light on the situation was the jacket she wore. Right now, on the back of the jacket that looked like it was taped on with masking tape or something or white paint, it said, "I really don't care." Do you? In a form of a question, right? Um, I'm going to say that was not a good choice. I'm going to say it's it doesn't look good. I'm going to say that someone who is famous for her fashion and has much better clothes than that, that jacket costs $39 and she got it off the internet or something. Why would you wear that? And why uh, wouldn't some staff or tap listen, her on the shoulder I and say, "I totally agree with you. I think it's completely out of line." Yeah, I know what you're going to say. That she would wear a jacket from last season's yeah, line, right? She, doesn't she know that this year that same jacket is in black? It's <sighs> ridiculous. And hers was in what khaki green? It's not, it's not even the. It's not even. It's not even this year's design. <laughs> and I mean. Somebody with the fashion sense of of Melania, but maybe the problem is all of the fashion designers that have refused to. She has nobody have refused to design. You know, I never her. thought of that. That might have been their son doing that jacket. Yeah, as a, as a you know project. School so project uh, here's the thing: she didn't actually wear it to the detention center. No, she didn't. She changed on the plane. Yeah, right. So not a big deal. It is uh, a big deal. Two. She should have if never worn it anywhere. If the thing that we have to complain about is what she's wearing, then maybe she's doing something right. Maybe, but I, my, my point is I don't really care what she wears. Right. I'm just saying uh, right. that it doesn't look good. Bummer. And it gives the opposition a lot of ammo. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, and think I'm of how, right, you're wrong, think she of, shouldn't have worn it. How, uh, maybe not, but, I mean, when the opposition, their only argument is so shallow and so petty... I mean, good. It, but their argument is everything they can pick up. They can't pick on her for actually going to visit. Uh, the no. only thing they can say is, well, you didn't go all the way and leave your son in one of the cages. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, or what, or what uh, Peter Fonda said, I oh, wish your son would get raped and yeah. be held. That guy's a douche. Yeah, he is. You know, so is his sister, and I <clears throat> guess maybe his dad was kind of a dick, too, but. Yeah, I mean, I think it runs in the family Henry a little Fonda. bit, at least the siblings, right? Well, I think the dad had issues, too. Yeah. Henry. Henry Fonda. Well, the kids probably got it from somewhere. If you believe in genetics and in, and in evolution and, and stuff like that, nurture and nature. Okay, so good for her for going? I guess. Maybe think about what you wear in public. You are the first lady, unless you really don't care, which I suspect that's really true. I mean, that's what her shirt said. Yeah, I don't. I don't think she really cares, unless we're missing the the point. If it was a, a, a satire, if it was to point out that we should care, you know, if there's some reason that hasn't been well, expressed. Well, this is what well. I'm. So they they could have there, spun it better. I think there's a bit of a separation between how she feels about the situation and how Trump feels. Uh, her. Donald, her husband. <laughs> I said it's, Trump. Her name's Trump. You know what I mean. The Donald. The Donald. I'm sorry. The Donald. Uh, maybe it was pointed at him. Like I don't care what you think. I'm going, even though you're trying to be strong that's, on the issue. That's almost worse. <laughs> stop. Stop helping. There's a reason you don't work in PR. Just stop. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> don't you remember after the? Uh, uh, the video that came out, the grab him by the, oh, you know. the P word? She wore the bow, like the, the uh, 
pink uh, vagina bow thing. Like she she uses her clothes to make a statement all the time. Yeah, she's she's savvy, pretty, pretty she's savvy. conscious of of her choices. So, but what was she trying to say there? I think she was saying, "I'm comfortable and I'm going to get on a plane." Yeah. Then wear then wear be like a New Jersey mafioso lieutenant and wear a, a, a running suit mm-hmm. with matching pants and jacket. Those are delightfully comfortable. <laughs> and they look good. They do look good. That's true. So whatever. That's what she should have done. Any mafiosos in the room? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there is no such thing as the mafia. <laughs> what, what we're saying, Milani, is next time you're going on a trip, call us. Call Brian. Yeah, send a photo of what you're wearing. I'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> That's all I ask. Uh, do you do you want to do the, the 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 robot thing? Yeah, let's do it. And get it out of the way. Oh, we're, not, I, we're not talking about how everyone said Trump can end the families being oh, separated oh, yeah. at Go the ahead. border yeah. with a stroke of his pen, and then Trump went ahead and ended the families being separated with a stroke of his pen, and everyone's yeah. saying Trump sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a, this guy what? can't win. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, he literally can't. I'm going to say I had a discussion with two family members, okay. and they were bitching about Trump. Okay. And they were like, oh, he's terrible. I said, all right, name three things that he's done that, that are bad or wrong or against the law. Russia. And they, and they were silent. I said, come on, what, what, what has he done? Yeah. They couldn't say it. And one said, well, whatever you say is going to say it's not true. <laughs> maybe said, maybe yeah maybe you know i'm not saying he's an angel but name something don't just parrot what you're hearing online from the left yeah uh, it's i mean it's absolutely ridiculous absolutely ridiculous it, it, i don't care what, you, what what what's what you say on either side there are issues with immigration yep and there can there are things that can be done to mitigate some of the issues we don't have to be radical one way or the other, but there are things that could be done fairly quickly with with Congress to help solve some of those issues. I mean, th- that's the thing. Trump, Trump, I, I, this isn't new. This is kind of how he's been operating for the last, I don't know, year, year or so. Yeah, uh, there's a problem. He says Congress should fix this problem. He waits. There's no Congress problem. doesn't fix it, so he does something to mitigate it. Well, but Obama operated in a similar way because he didn't have a lot of help from some things that he wanted to get through, so he had a pen and a phone. So, I mean, it was similar things. But I'm talking about the, 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 the population uh, I, coming the, together. The and, difference is the things that Obama wanted were, like, illegal and we didn't <laughs> want them. <laughs> I mean, there's a difference, well, right? Like health care, things like that. There, It's... On the, on the extreme, there's there's those people, and and I I I understand uh, whether they they want they don't think I do. I understand the morality about imaginary lines and borders, and that 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 everybody should be free to walk wherever they want and travel wherever they want. Fundamentally, philosophically, you know, I I get that. That's freedom, right? But what happens is you get ideology, and and all of a sudden hits reality. And so sometimes morality uh, suffers somewhat to mm. kind of correct. I mean, I well, I th- I think there's a bigger picture of morality, right? Like I th- I think I think we're treating people in this country morally correct by keeping them safe with borders, Right, like I mean, it's not just make a, that it's argument. not just a black and white. It's e- either yeah, or. It's yeah. like and you can. What's the best option for a moral decision? Yeah. Well, the ones that are, are like you know, let anybody go wherever they want. They tend to be more on the uh, anarchist type, no government or very little government, and everybody just sort of uh, uh, does what they want and, yep. and works volunteerism and all that. That that's great, but it doesn't work. Right. It just doesn't work. Um, mm-hmm. People aren't all going to play that game so while it's what you so what you can do is compromise and try to get as little government and as little laws and as little restrictions as you can but you're never going to have a society that can operate uh, on the united states the fourth largest population country in the world to have that work right there's just too many uh, differences it's too big 
But on the other hand, we can handle immigration, I think, in a, in a better, more humane way. Um, the problem is it costs money. Mm-hmm. But I think, in my opinion, if you ended some wars overseas, you might have some excess money to... Oh, I think I think we could find some money, and yeah, I think if you, I agree. you ended the war on drugs, uh, you would get a whole bunch of money freed up um, that could be used for some of those things, um, and helps with some of the dangerous immigration issues because of, perhaps, um, some of it is drug smuggling, right? Right. So yeah, I I totally agree with all of that, and in Mexico is becoming a crap hole lately. I mean, it, it's never been <laughs> How great. How dare you? But you know you were you've been there and you you've been scared a few times with some of the militias and the and the police and the quasi military groups random people but yeah you heard about the one guy that's running for what a governor in one of the one of the states in Mexico and nope. there's been a hundred and forty politicians murdered in the last year and a half oh they just shot one while he was taking selfie with somebody Jeez. in a crowd a guy just came up behind him and blew his brains out was he bad. No, uh-huh. that's the problem. They're all trying to get rid of the corruption and the drug guys, and they're not having any, yeah, any part right. of it. Yep. And men, women, doesn't matter, whoever, whoever hundred and, over 100 of them. You imagine if that happened in the United States? You don't like, you know, the guy that's running for office, you know, you just blow him away? Yeah. So I yeah. get why people <laughs> want to leave something like that. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it, too. But I, but I ask the question, I go, how many is enough how many people do you let into your borders is it a thousand is it a hundred thousand is it a hundred million is it a billion seven billion you know and i pose that to an anarchist and is like well yeah whatever they they can all come in here not reality well the thing is i think if we started letting everybody come in very quickly people wouldn't want to come in yeah because it would turn into yeah exactly so uh the Mm. thing the thing with the thing with Trump's maybe that's the uh, that's the uh, cure that would stop immigration. Become a third world country. Nobody <laughs> we get people emigrating. Well, that is some people's like, oh, just let the whole thing crumble and we'll start over. Right? That won't work. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it could. The, but I don't know. <laughs> it won't turn into something better. No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, not yeah. Not we'll, for we'll become for centuries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing with Trump's executive order to to stop families from being separated. I don't think it's going to last very long. I think it's already being challenged in court. Yeah. Uh, There, there was a ruling a few years back. I think it was like Flores or something that essentially said children can only be uh, held in detention for like 20 days or something like that. So it makes it impossible to hold children with their criminal parents for more than 20 days, which means you either, let them all go, right. or you have to keep the children separate. Which is what they've done in the past. They basically gave them uh, personal recognizance mm. and uh, bond, and said, "You got to come back and face the music." And then very, they disappear. Yeah, very yeah. few of them come yeah. back. Well, why that. would you? Why would you? So, I mean, that's the problem. I think it's going to get. Uh, I think his executive order is going to be overturned, and we'll be right back looking at Congress saying, "Hey, can you do something?" Here's some fun facts about oh, I, immigration. I love fun facts. Here's here's a graph of immigrate immigrants. Now this is all immigrants. Oh, this is great for radio. So there's a graph. Well, I'm going to explain it. What's on the x-axis? Uh, the x-axis uh, is uh, uh, states. Okay. And on the on the y-axis is money. I don't care about the y-axis. So and and actually it has three things. So what it has is. The number of, of immigrants detained by state. Okay. All right. Does so Idaho have a lot? No. Okay. <laughs> but you're going to be surprised by the states that have the most. I'm thinking Maine. New Jersey. Okay. New York. Washington State. Florida. California. Arizona. Those are the top ones. Now, there are immigrants in Colorado, D.C., Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, our home state, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Texas. Texas doesn't. Even, Texas is about in the middle of them. Yeah. And Utah. There's a big river there. As far as expense, Texas spends the most in detention, even though it doesn't have the most mm, detainees. That's interesting. Now, you might think. they have nice cages. I'll give you the top four or five countries 
uh, where these immigrants come from. Okay. And no surprise, Mexico is number one. El Salvador. This is their, okay, so this is their, like, home country. Home country. Right. All right. All right. I wish I could read them. Do you need me to read them? Honduras. <laughs> Guatemala. Not specified. <laughs> <laughs> but well, what's interesting is there's like 35 or 40 countries there. I mean, we have people detained from the United Kingdom. That's interesting. Almost more from there than that we have from Afghanistan. Very few there. I mean, it's very well, it's few. hard to get here from Afghanistan. But those last four or five go up exponentially. That's interesting. No, it's, it makes sense. All right, length of I said it makes sense. Huh? You said it was interesting. I don't know that it's interesting. I'm talking about it. I don't talk about interesting. Making things. sense and being interesting isn't, they're not exclusive. mutually exclusive. No, they're not. All right. You hope they go together sometimes. Not, not now, <laughs> but. All right, length of detention, right? How long do they keep detainees? I hope we keep those British a long time. This is, this is No, it's just, there's no British. There's no breakdown of oh, who we're keeping, just the lengths. There's so, no British. <laughs> <laughs> two to four. Well, it's a bitch making them tea all the time. They, it's expensive. I say, oh boy, <laughs> they have a spot of sugar for my tea. Maybe a slice of lemon. All right. So the the the. the, the all right. So two to four years is forty eight percent. Stay between two and four years. But detained. Detained for two to four years. Wow. Twenty eight percent. It's one to two years. 12% stay from six months to a year. 7% stay less than a year. Uh, and uh, it's 5% that stay longer than four years. Jeez. So the sweet spot is between one and four years is, uh, you know, 60%, 70%. All right. That's crazy. On. I just wanted to throw those out there. I, I didn't realize any of that. All right. Do you have a question? Me? Yeah, trivia question. Oh, we're going to take a break. Yeah, already? we're we're past it. We got we got oh, so caught up in your man. interesting data. Well, I will say that this is an interesting trivia question, and it's one of them. It's it's a multi. There's more than one answer. Okay. All right. So one may be easy, but to get all of them, I think might be a little tough. Okay. All right. All right. That's so fair. I would say that it's 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 medium hard. Okay. So the National Wrestling Hall of Fame has honored four presidential grapplers. Okay. Name as many as you can. Four presidents of the, of the are four. in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Macho Man Randy Savage. Is he one of them? Was he a president? Oh, I thought you meant people that grappled the president. Oh, well, that'd be millions. <laughs> Kennedy would have had just a few hundred thousand himself. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Lock, 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 lock it in. And rip, 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 rip the knob off. Red State Talk Radio. My Parents Open Carry, a pro-gun kids book from White Feather Press. 13-year-old Brenna and her parents spend their day in typical fashion. But what's not so typical is that Brenna's parents lawfully open carry handguns for self-defense. And the Strongs join a growing number of families who are standing up for their Second Amendment right and bringing gun ownership out of the closet. Order your copy of this unique kids book at MyParentsOpenCarry.com. It's a bumpy ride through the political jungle with Nate and Brian. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. What? Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy 
pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 877-219-8770 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 877-219-8770 to take your call now. Call 877-219-8770. That's 877-219-8770. Again, 877-219-8770. Whenever I'm feeling a little down under, I can always count on Nate and Brian for their interesting perspective on topics important to freedom and civil rights by listening to the At Odd Show. Nate and Brian cover important topics with insight, intelligence, and of course, humor. I can always expect a laugh or two. So if you want to be informed and have a great time, give these guys a listen. The Ed Odd Show with the greatest political talk show hosts in history, Nate and Brian. Nate and it's sad that they actually believe that. So give a listen because the delusional need love too. Are you looking for some way cool t-shirts? Check out ChuckDug.com. They have hundreds of crazy fun t-shirts like gun, patriotic, and you better believe zombie shirts. At ChuckDug.com, you'll find quality shirts at a quality price. All shirts start at just 10 bucks with free shipping over 50 bucks. Mention Radio 1 coupon code at checkout and grab a cool 10% off. That's ChuckDug.com. T-shirts with attitude. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-755-9290. That's 800-755-9290. 800-755-9290. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Nate. If you like the Ad Odds Show, and we know you do, why not order your very own Ad Odds t-shirt sizes small to 6XL in a cool black color? So support our show, check out the great prices at chugdug.com, or head over to our website, adoddshow.com, and click the link. And unlike listening to our show, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> We're back. I'm Brian. I'm Nate. And this is the Ad Odd Show. We have a trivia question. Semi-hard, I don't know. The the National Wrestling Hall of Fame has honored four presidential grapplers uh, in their their hall of fame. And uh, just wondered how many people... Could name four or name any of them. So we had some guesses. Well, I'll tell you, we had forty-one guesses. Oh, they just missed it. Not a, not a single one was correct. Right. That they so, would have just named those other four. Yeah. I will say, you got it. One right. I got one. And you've got the actual. You got the most recent president. Well, I that remember. Was it. I remember. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I remember I when think. she was I'm a not grappler. sure. Uh, yeah. We. So I mean, you said, do you want me to name all the guesses? You, they were like. Oh yeah, sure. Ronald Reagan, yeah. Donald Trump. A good grappler. Henry Ford. Trump, not a good grappler. Henry Ford was not a president, <laughs> okay, that but that's good. No, Gerald Ford. Oh, okay. George Washington. Well, he, he probably John wrestled. Adams. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson. Oh, I could see little Tom Adams. He'd be a lightweight. He'd be a featherweight. Little, little Tom Adams. <laughs> little Tommy Adams. I could <laughs> who see. Who is that? He, who is little Tommy Adams? Uh, uh, who, what's his name? John? Oh, John. Yeah, John Adams. Like Quincy? Tommy, John Tommy Quincy Tommy was his Adams, brother. Or? Tom... 
Tommy was more of, he was what we call today different and light footed. I think uh I think Benjamin Franklin was the best presidential wrestler. I yeah, okay. I don't think he was ever president, but that's fine. Or a wrestler. Or well, I think he wrestled a few girls. No, uh, well, <laughs> he was quite the womanizer. I mean, he was no Jefferson. No, well, well, Jefferson was somewhat loyal to a particular um, type. That's true. Yeah, I don't think Jefferson really complained too much about any type. All right, so these presidents that are in the national, the U.S. national, I should say, could have been any national. Well, I said uh, William uh, Howard Taft. 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 That's correct. But there's also George Washington. Hmm. Teddy Roosevelt. And probably the best known, and I thought people would actually guess, because he was known for being quite the wrestler, Mm -hmm. uh, because he was probably homosexual and liked wrestling shirtless with men, Abraham Lincoln. Oh. Barack Obama. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) Barack always liked getting pinned. (laughs) He has a lovely wife. I don't think he's gay. So those are the four. Washington, Taft, Lincoln, and Roosevelt are in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Isn't that cool? I don't know. That's interesting. I thought it was interesting. I didn't know they were there. Uh, Okay, on this day in 1788, what happened, Nate? What's today? I don't know. What is today? Yeah. Today is Constitution Day. Is it? It's when the U.S. date? What? Keep going. Uh, June 21st. Today's Constitution Day. Uh, 1788. It's Constitution Day. So because they realized there were issues with the Articles of Confederation during the Revolutionary War, they convened a Congress to draft a new Constitution. And that was, I don't know, 86, 1786. So it took them a couple of years. Uh, they came up with a uh, Constitution that had a strong federal government, Nate, just what we want, right? Yes. With no. It, with an intricate system of checks and balances and was signed by 38 of the 41 delegates that convened in Philadelphia. They also said that it would not be binding until they had had been ratified by nine of the 13 states. Five states, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut. Man, boom, 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 they signed it. Massachusetts, the dirty little scumbags. They said, not so fair. Not, or not so fair, not so fast. You guys didn't talk about undelegated powers to the states and the last of and the lack of constitutional protection of basic political rights, such as freedom of speech, religion, and the press. So it was Massachusetts that held out for drafting the Bill of Rights. So in February of 1788, a compromise was reached with Massachusetts and the other states, and they got 10 of the Bill of Rights that we know today. Hmm. Narrowly ratified in Massachusetts, followed by Maryland and South Carolina. On June 21st, 1788, New Hampshire became the ninth state, so they got it. And uh, the U.S. Constitution would begin on March 4th, 1789. On September 25th and 89, the first Congress of the United States adopted those 12 amendments, like I said, 12. Okay, today, the U.S. Constitution, uh, Constitution? <laughs> the U.S. Constitution is the oldest written Constitution still in operation in the world. Wow. That's impressive. Surpassing the North Korean Constitution hmm. by several decades. Yeah. A, a century what? or two. What? The North Korean Constitution? Yeah, I don't know that they have one. It's and, and, it would, and it would only be like 60 years old. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 70. That was the joke. 70 years. One, so they don't 70, have one, and two, they hadn't haven't existed. Seventy that long. years this year, right? Wasn't it forty eight? Is that right? Is that right? No, fifty eight, uh, forty. The, the war was over in fifty three. The Korean War. Yeah, so, but so they would have come into becoming a. I think forty eight. I think nineteen forty eight when they pulled away when North separated. Korea became a thing. Maybe there was a war fought over it. I know that. <laughs> what was that called? It was still ongoing, apparently. It was called the Korean War. Hmm. Never heard of her. Donald Trump proposes that the military adapt and form a Department of Space Force. My grandfather served in the Korean War. Yeah, my dad just missed it by about six months. He he was there shortly after on a hospital ship. 
giving aid. So he, he was Korea, but it was not. They were not actively at war yeah. at that time. Wow. He liked Korea. Are you skipping wow. the robots? Oh, we can do that. And then I, I want to do the space. To not skip the robots. Yeah, because I don't like what this guy's talking about. All right, so where are we? Uh, mm. how, where am I here? Oh, okay. I, so apparently, a startup company mm-hmm. uh, that's been in business for a while, but they uh, did a uh, fundraiser and they got twenty nine million dollars. And the company wouldn't disclose what companies are placing orders. Did say the devices. This is what I like. These devices aren't designed to take jobs away. Quote, it's very easy to initially think negatively about it, but the robots are actually creating so much more work for people. Yeah. And uh, then he goes on to describe <clears throat> what the robots will do, taking jobs away from people, because the robots that are currently in Walmart stores across the country are only being used to scan shelves to figure out what's in stock or what needs to be replaced. Inventory. Yep. Uh, the data is actually helping to improve Walmart's bottom line. Well, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. they don't have to pay somebody to do it. It's, uh, it's overall operations are improved. The stores are educating the staff on how the robots can be beneficial to them. Yeah, and then they're going to be replaced. The robots also allow associates and employees to focus on the highest value tasks instead. Mm-hmm. Oh, the robots are able to work three times faster and are twice as accurate than people, which frees up the two remaining employees to do other important tasks, like maintaining the robots. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's what it does, is it, it, it eliminates the need for a human yeah. to walk around and look at shelves and lets that same person do more meaningful work. It's absolutely. It doesn't. But it it's, takes. it. But It's not they taking could, jobs away. It could. Yeah, it could replace the person that was spending eight it, hours a day it, doing it, half the it, thing that the robot does in 20 minutes. It displaces jobs. Yeah, okay. It doesn't take jobs away. Of course it does. It moves them into different no, areas. You don't know that. I, I Yeah, I I do. No, you don't. What it, experience it, do you have with any it, kind of it, robots or production? It makes sense that you have a machine. We're not to the point yet where machines are creating and maintaining machines all over the place. And they so will. you still need humans to design you need humans right. to build. You but need you, humans but, to maintain. But you don't need a human need to do humans. inventory on the shelves anymore. Right. And it's somebody great. was getting paid to do that. Yeah. And now, uh, yeah, I. Yeah. you can say that all you want. I mean, you, can, uh, you can put a cherry on the top. The bottom line is. It's raising the bar it's for sure, but I think that's a good from, thing. From people. Uh, it's not. And his explanations it's of how it's not actually it's, it tells you exactly why. No, he makes the point that these people can can do more meaningful work. Yeah, at another job after they got laid off. Okay. It's like Nancy Pelosi saying, you uh, know, it's uh, good that you're a part-time employee. That frees you up to pursue your no, dreams. that's, that's be a, ridiculous. Be a painter or a poet. No, I mean, that's ridiculous. A beatnik, man. To think that there that we should have some requirement that Walmart jobs are available is ridiculous. I'm not arguing that. There's, there's I, plenty. I, if I were Walmart, I'd want to have all these. But plenty of jobs. Don't blow smoke up my my butt and tell me it's perfume when it's going to displace and displace yeah and i agree with that by displace i, I mean good. layoff certain ploy, employees that did that end of argument i win <clears throat> no question about it I, okay now let's get back to the <laughs> department of space force <laughs> all right you know when you when we talked about korean war you, when you said my dad was I thought you were going to say your dad was in the Space Force. I should have. It was grandpa. my grandpa, but yeah. yeah. But then I should you said have. Korea. Sorry. That's all right. I wanted. I just wanted to point this but out. But my dad was in the Space Force. Okay. Okay. Was he doing inventory on shelves? <laughs> yeah, but he was. He was. His Very job slow. was. His job was taken away by a robot. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Most people don't realize this. Um, there are five departments of the military right you know you got the army marine corps navy air force and coast guard there's five seven there's five eight (laughs) there's five okay but when you include the uniformed services of the government did you know that noaa has navy officers 
Like well, 6,000 of them. Why wouldn't they? And they wear naval uniforms. Why, why wouldn't they have them? United States Public Health Service also wears and has commissioned officers wears naval uniforms. Why wouldn't they? That's why the Surgeon General is literally an admiral. I don't know why they call him a general. But the uh, the Surgeon General wears, uh, they're like a vice admiral. I think it's because we had all those cigarette packs printed up, and we don't want to. Now, I'm not sure about the health services, but I think, but I know why Noah did this, and they did this like 100-some years ago. And it was because Noah would go around the world uh, surveying ports and oceans, and they would be off the coast of hostile countries yeah. that we might be they were also spying they didn't they didn't say that but they were all also spying so what was happening was um if you're caught for spying and you're not in the military you're executed if you're a naval combatant then you aren't executed you can be imprisoned and held and sure. all that but you're not executed maybe you shouldn't be so they decided to commission a lot of these noaa uh, employees and give them uniforms uh, under the guise of, of military so that they would be at less risk when they went out and they did spying. I would suspect public health was probably for authority reasons. You know, you have a contagion, I'm going to shut your town down. Yep, I'm the military. Bull crap, you're not going to do that. And then you have an admiral show up and all that. But those two uh, uh, corps, you know, are, are commissioned it's officers. And they they wear naval uniforms. And there's thousands of them. They have different insignia. Are you going to sign up for a Space Force? That's, I'm too old, I think. I heard they don't want Marines. Former Marines or current mm. Marines can't join. I, I'm not sure. I, I think it's like telling a joke about a race that you are not part of. I'm not sure it's a good idea to tell a Marine joke Okay. if you're not a Marine. All right. Fine. It's a, our, good, it's our, a, good, uh, it's a good joke. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell it then. Okay. All right. Uh, but did you hear about Virginia, Maryland, Massachusetts, New York, and Rhode Island? Governors pulled the national their national guard oh, from the border. Going back to yeah. Why did going back to immigration? Why I, you put this in a terrible order. Yeah, I did. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, to they be did because they didn't want to help the families be separated. But Trump fixed that, so now I think they should send them. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, to be honest, I didn't spend much time this week on, on preparation. I noticed. Because I was so busy with the march. I noticed. Are we done with Space Force? Well, I don't know. You, you said it was a great idea. Oh, yeah, of course. Were you being facetious? Idea. No, I wasn't. Okay. No. So you uh, think it's, it's good the, to, it's to the, spend tax money on something again? I mean, you're for big government? It, yes. Big, big military? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I want to okay. build a, a big wall. Okay. We're going to need to really build wall. one. big wall. Up to we're, space. We're going to need to build one in space, too. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think here's the thing. Most of what the Space Force will be doing is already happening as right. part of the Air Force. So why why are we creating another focus? Bureaucracy? Yeah, maybe focus. You could have you could have a because, bureau. Look, look I don't. I honestly don't too. think Trump is the guy that's into creating bureaucracy because he's also like right now working on consolidating different departments, like the uh, what is it, the Department of Labor and Department of Education. Yeah. He wants to consolidate those two, and then the have educated labor. I don't. It's something like education and the workforce, or something. But he wants to consolidate those departments, which I think, I assume, will consolidate at least some of the management right. and save some positions. Those jobs will be replaced, and they'll have to go work at Walmart, where their job. Oh no! Will be replaced again. Where their job gets replaced again by robots. By robots. Sentient robots. I accidentally unplugged my can't. Oh, yeah. there we go. That's better. Sound better. Um, what, what was I going to say? Damn it. I was. Oh, so. Anyway, so, the point is uh, Space Force, I don't think, is about aliens. It's about every other country oh, who I don't is think, trying. I don't, who to, thinks it's about who, aliens? All the memes. Well, yeah, but I think that those are jokey. I mean, they're just jokes. Mm, I, don't I don't think know. it means. I, I, I think you're talking about an Earth Defense Force yeah. from space. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. But we already have a, a subdivision in the Air Force that does that, Space Command. Yep. Now, I wanted uh, to know whether we would have a um, Space Force One. Oh, you, you wanted to know that? You Did propose you that, that we should have like I, a shuttle I that takes absolutely think the president up into space. If we don't already have that. I think what's safer, like when there's an issue, they like to have the president in the air, right? Because they think it's the safest place for him. Right. Well, I think even better would be like, 
low Earth orbit on a shuttle. Around Mars. Around Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Is there a coincidence that just last week we talked about how they found some organic matter on oh Mars? Oh, my God. And now right. this week, Space Force. Son of a gun. I think, I, I, maybe, I think we're going to war. I think that... I think they found more than just like molecules. I think so. God, you mean they found the Martian army? All right, we're out of time. Dang it, we had so much more to talk about. See you next week. All right, bye bye.